Hi, this is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing. It's been a long day. We got a little bit of work done, uh, but primarily the big job today was driving down to Sierra Vista to Thunder Mountain Metal Sales and picking up our metal roof, which you can see here laying in the bed of the truck. We also got additional trim pieces, including a drip edge, rake edges, and uh, I forgot what the other piece is called, but all the trim pieces. We did install the drip edge, so the I guess the order of installation will be drip edge, panels, then the gable edges or rake edges, and then the front flashing. So uh, I have a friend coming over, Jason, tomorrow. He's going to be helping me out with these panels. They're 11 feet, 6 inches long. They're not heavy, but if a slight wind catches them, uh, it'll create quite a sale, and I'm not looking forward to that. So hopefully with his help, we'll get this knocked out in a couple hours. And by the way, I show you. I mean, what a great sunset. Anyways, that was it for today. Just a quick update, and I will see you tomorrow. I'll be putting this is going to be a multiple day video, so I'll be back with you tomorrow morning when we get uh, working on the installation of the panels. Good morning, this is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing. It's Tuesday morning and we're getting ready to put the metal panels on the solar shed roof, the ones that we picked up yesterday at Thunder Mountain Sales in Sierra Vista. No, I'm not being sponsored by them. I wish I were, but uh, they had such great customer service. You gotta imagine, we ordered the panels on Friday and on Monday at 10 a.m., that was yesterday at 10 a.m., they called to say they're ready to be picked up. And I know there's not a whole, I've been to their production uh, area, there's not a lot of work involved with it, but uh, just to have that certain kind of service and get it done that quickly, we really appreciate it because we want to get this solar shed buttoned up as quickly as possible. So I'm waiting for Jason to show up, and as soon as he gets here, we'll get started with the panels. Okay, so... Jason and I just finished putting up the panels. Give you a better look. Let me get up on the ladder. Without checking the time, I'm guessing it took about an hour and a half to do. And if I must say so, it looks pretty good. A couple things we learned. Uh, the panels are designed so that the overlap is actually a prescribed amount. In other words, you can't take one panel and overlap the other panel two-thirds, for example. The uh, style of ridges just won't allow for it. It'll create uh, a, an unsightly gap. So you really have to uh, do the overlap just on the, the final piece, like you, like you can see perhaps right here. Because what we originally wanted to do was take this last panel, overlap it, uh, as far as neat as needed it would have been a two foot overlap and it just created a big gap so we were actually uh we needed to take tin snips measure it and then just cut this edge with tin snips it's getting covered with the gable flashing anyway so once it's secured down it won't even be visible so that's it for right now and now we're going to consider looking at the gable flashing and see what that entails. In the meantime, Yvonne's over here working on the cob. What you got going? What you got going? Um, yeah, I try to get a little bit more clay into this mixture. It feels a little bit sandy, so I have this. So is this the pure clay that we have that was over there that I sifted the other day? No. No, this is uh, back from our property, so there is sand in it as well, but a uh, high percentage of clay. So I hope this will do the job. If not, then I will take from the clay, from the real, just clay part we have. So, so are you going to add more clay to this, or are you going to no, are you going to put it in this liquid? I'm putting this into the mix. So you need that much. You need that much liquid to to get it to to the right consistency. I will see. Could, huh? I will see. <laughs> I hope you know, right shut up, Bill. If not, Go back to I the roof. <laughs> I got it. Okay, well, that's cool. I, if, if it's too wet, I will just let it dry in the sun a little bit. I wouldn't add that whole thing, but...
Okay. okay. Too late. Yeah, she'll let it dry. This is Yvonne's gig. I'm steering clear of it. Yep. All right, I'll check back with you to see how yep. it works out. Sounds good. <laughs> see you later. Okay, so this is Jason. He came over to help us today. Jason, what's the name of your website and your Instagram? Uh, it's Visago Games. V A G. No, V A S S A G O. <laughs> can't even spell it. Yourself. No, I can't even spell it. <laughs> Jason just moved to St. St. David from uh, yeah. from Fountain Hills, Arizona, which is where we happened to live at one point in time too. So, and he was kind enough to come by and give us a hand with the roof. And uh, I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot of him and check out his oh, yeah. video and Instagram. So Yvonne just finished a batch of cob, ran a second layer all the way around the building. And she was sure to leave dimple marks in it so that the subsequent layer will be able will have something good to grip onto. And we're gonna take a break. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Anything else to say before I end this video? It was just it's hard work it really is mm -hmm. but it's fun it, it's fun but yeah you and just go slowly but it will be great when it's done I think that's one of the main mm -hmm. things is you can't expect it to go quickly no. if you understand that it's going to take time and just accept then that just be fine with it and, and accept doing a little going. bit at a time day for day chipping away at it then you'll be okay exactly good okay thanks to Jason's help we got the roof on there are still areas that need to be tacked down. You can see a couple of seams over here that are still a little loose. I gotta throw some screws in across the front fascia, but otherwise uh, I'm gonna call it done. It took us probably around, I'm guessing three and a half hours. And that includes watching a couple of the uh, manufacturer's videos as to how to make the cuts for the corners and things like that. And a little bit of improvising. But otherwise, uh, it's a it's a pretty simple project. Put it this way, the next one will go up a lot faster. I guess the worst part about it is uh, there are special self-tapping screws that are color-coded or color-keyed to the material with rubber washers. You gotta be careful not to sink the washers in too tight. The screw's in too tight, otherwise you crush the washer and probably compromise the waterproofness. But uh, the term self-tapping, I wish they were a little more efficient. I'd say probably 10% of them went flying, maybe even more, maybe 20% of them went flying uh, before it actually cut a hole in the, in, the, in, the, the, uh, in the metal. So anyways, the next step will be finishing up putting all the extra screws in and then also uh, getting some gutter material for the backside and we will be installing a gutter for rainwater collection off this roof. Anyways, that's it for today. This is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing. Again, I wanna thank Jason for stopping by. Jason, thanks a lot, man, appreciate it. Don't forget to check out his channels on YouTube and Instagram, Visago Games. Anyways, we'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks again.